Someone say speakeasy? I had a long day and need to kick back for a while. Look, I'm not trying to ruffle anyone's feathers. But if I told you, I heard there was a mob boss yapping. About $50 million worth of jewelry, coins and greenbacks buried in a trunk somewhere in upstate New York. My name is Dutch Schultz, and I was a gangster back in the roaring 1920s. I was the bee's knees, you see. Heard you been looking for my treasure. Bee's knees, my ass. These mobsters are nothing but a bunch of scalawags and lounge lizards scamming people out of cash. Well, who you calling lounge lizard? You're a cigarette smoking flapper as light as a wrapper. There is treasure out there and me and Fast Eddie is gonna find it. He just bought a 1930 Ford Model A. It's faster than plaster dripping from your roof in a disaster. He's my ass. Sweet cheeks. Dutch Schultz was born Arthur Simon Flegenheimer, August 6th, 1902 in the Bronx, New York City. When he was only eight years old, his father left the family. A few moons later, he decided to ditch school and started working odd jobs make a little dough, it seems. In his teenage years, young Dutch decided to dip his toes in the mobster crime. He started looting apartments and pickpocketing old folks with his slippery hands and other petty crimes to fatten his empty pockets. By the early roar in 1920s, Schultz had a ring of bandits robbing houses left and right. Then he would take those items and sell them and make bank. But as the coppers started busting everyone for tossing back drinks, prohibition was in full effect. Hidden underground bars known as speakeasies started popping up left and right like dandelions on a hot summer day. Someone say speakeasy? I had a long day and need to kick back for a while. And these speakeasies, you see, were in high demand for illegal booze. Being aware of this racket, Schultz started building his empire of boozing and schmoozing like he was the bee's knees, flying down the road in his armored Lincoln V8, bootlegging rum, whiskey, wine, and moonshine. Well, that is until 1933, when prohibition was repealed because all the unsustainable violent crimes that started taking place. Now, it's said that some people believe old Dutch Schultz made between 10 and 50 million bucks. But he went in hiding. He went on the lam in 32 and 33. For what? Well, in 1913, the U.S. government passed a nasty law known as income tax. The income tax law. That's right. We're still paying it today, baby. So, it was then and there that the Manhattan DA, Thomas E. Dewey, looking to boost his political career, that is. Thomas E. Dewey was hell-bent on destroying Dutch Schultz and his criminal empire and nailing him to the wall for, for you guessed it tax evasion. The same way they got old Al Capone. Knowing he may get thrown in the slammer, Dutch decided to hide a vast amount of his money that he had made from bootlegging. The tale that's been told goes a bit like this. That night, Dutch and Lulu ventured to Phoenicia, New York. A town Dutch knew well from his bootlegging days. Out in the country, on a dark, deserted road, way out in the Catskill Mountains, somewhere that is, where no one would bother searching, there was Dutch Schultz standing in front of his 1931 Lincoln V8 jalopy. The shimmering lights from the car illuminated Lulu Rosencrantz, digging a hole to drop a small metal trunk into the ground filled with precious jewels, cash, anywhere from 50 to 150 million dollars in nowadays money. Dutch threatened if Lulu ever told anyone about the treasure they had buried, he'd put him in a pair of concrete galoshes and toss him in the river. Dutch carved an X into the tree to mark the spot. Dutch and his good fellows, including the slippery Lulu Rosencrantz and a fellow named Marty Crompier, met up like three clowns in a circus freak show afterwards. But that slippery snake in the grass, Lulu, couldn't keep his yapper shut from what it sounds like. He allegedly yapped and flapped to some flapper girls about he was going to be rich when he went and dug it up. He also spilled the beans to his pal there. Marty Crump here, revealing the treasure's location near Phoenicia, New York. Dutch Schultz was a real wise guy, you see. He didn't trust anyone. Now, some even claim that Lulu drew a map for Marty 
But there ain't no proof of that either. At this point, the story starts sounding more like a pirate movie with Charlie Chaplin playing the part of Lulu Rosencrantz running around telling stories to get free drinks. Who knows? It's hard to say. Now, rumors about the rival mobsters in New York City were running like water down the street in a flood, saying Schultz and his days were numbered because he wanted to make Dewey and the prosecutors sleep with the fishes. You see, Dewey was putting the screws to him, clamping down. Schultz had nowhere to run and finally surrendered to the authorities in Albany, New York. His first trial ended in a deadlocked jury. At his second trial, he was found not guilty due to a lack of evidence. But soon, there were whispers in the wind claiming that perhaps, just perhaps, old Dutch Schultz did a little jury tampering. Likely just a bunch of lounge lizards smoking cigars and drinking brandy who were jealous of his little empire. After Dutch's acquittal, he moved his greasy and monster headquarters to a tavern he owned in Newark, New Jersey. He called the place the Palace Chop House, probably because that's where he liked to chop up bodies when no one was looking. Determined to reclaim his empire, Schultz went on a rampage, picking off his enemies. Now, according to the FBI specialist, old agent Jack French, this angered the powerful New York crime syndicate. Dutch Schultz had finally ruffled too many feathers. Then on October 23, 1935, when Dutch Schultz was the least expecting it, Dutch Schultz was mowed down by these rival New York mobsters, sending him and his secrets to the grave. 